Today, I'm gonna do the ultimate cheap versus expensive gaming chair showdown so that we can get a bit of an indication what the two opposite ends of the gaming chair market looks like. And then I'm going to spend 12 uninterrupted hours sitting in each of these chairs to see what they'll do to my body. But before we get into that, a quick disclaimer. Heaven Miller did send me this very expensive chair that I'm sitting in right now, and as far as I understood our communication, I get to keep it. Although Heaven Miller was very relaxed about the whole thing, and they basically said, here's the chair with an affiliate link, do with it what you will. So with the disclaimer out of the way, let's roll the intro. On the cheap end, we have this SK Depot gaming chair, I think is what it's called, and I paid about 160 Canadian dollars for it. And apparently this is the best selling gaming chair on Amazon, which makes me a, a little bit concerned for your well-being because you shouldn't sit on this chair for any period of time really. Now, aesthetically, it has that standard Kirkland brand Recaro bucket seat aesthetic that's so common with gaming chairs, which is actually a terrible idea because bucket seats aren't designed for comfort. They're designed to hold you in place while you're hurtling around a racetrack doing three Gs through the corners. And I don't know about you, but I don't really have much of a problem with G-forces while gaming. Oh, from the moment that you sit down in it, it just immediately leans forward, and it kind of feels like the chair is trying to throw you out of it, which, which is not a great feeling, and that's with the forward leaning lock enabled. But then, when you remove the lock, it does this, which... What is the point? Why do you want your chair to be able to do this? Now, the only way that I really found to combat the chair kind of trying to buck you off it is if you take the backrest and you kind of lean it back a bit, because then, it acts as ballast, which kind of stabilizes the chair a bit. But now, I'm essentially sitting on a stool. I don't have any back support. Uh, on the note of the back support, though, it can go very far back. But again, this is such a stupid position for your gaming chair to be able to go into. And then when you want to reset the back of the chair, it kind of like just... It kind of just rockets back up you. It's like the chair is actively trying to maim you. It is genuinely terrible and it just feels so badly made and like it's gonna break after a couple hours of use. It's like a wish chair, basically. It's, it's, it's real bad. And now on the Elon Musk end of the gaming chair market, we have the Herman Miller Embody Logitech collaboration, which if I'm not mistaken, is the most expensive gaming chair that you can buy that isn't like a scale model replica of a tank for some reason. It comes in at an eye-watering 1,600 US dollars, which is a whole lot of money for a chair. But there are several reasons for that price tag. The first one is the fact that it was designed by a bunch of people with very impressive acronyms in front of their names and that actually understand how ergonomics work and how to make a chair that isn't actively trying to maim you. Unlike this SK Depot chair, which I think was designed by the people that do the torturing in Guantanamo Bay. And then another reason for the price is that this chair has a 12 year warranty on it. I don't think I own anything that has a 12 year warranty on it, let alone something as high wear as a chair. It has this cloth material that covers the chair that feels like it's very durable. And that combined with this cast aluminium xenomorph spine down the back of the chair makes it feel like it's gonna last at least 12 years. Ugh. Okay, now I have to say, the first time that I sat in the Embody, I was actually a bit disappointed. Considering what it costs, I was expecting it to not only feel like a cloud, but also to have the chair like do my taxes for me and maybe solve the global energy crisis. And it, it obviously didn't do any of that. The first thing that I noticed with it is that it, it doesn't feel as padded as you would like, uh, especially in the bottle region. Uh, it's, it's soft and squidgy, but it feels like over long periods of time, you're definitely gonna have some butt fatigue. The same goes for the back. It's not very padded at all, but it does 
does support your spine better than any chair I've ever sat in because it, it conforms to the shape of your back and then just like holds it in place and it really relieves pressure from your spine over long sessions of sitting. Now on the right hand side you have this knob that can very incrementally set the kind of curvature and uprightness of the back so that you can get it into the perfect position for you that's comfortable for you. And on the other side, you have this little recliner knob that has four different settings, which goes from straight up like this, all the way down to about this, which isn't nearly as far down as the other chair, but this is a, a very comfortable position to be in. It doesn't feel like you're hanging over a concrete pipe midair in the way that you do with the other one when it's when its back is down. Uh, and it also really holds you in place well. Like it doesn't feel like the chair is gonna give out under your weight. I am about six foot tall and weigh about 80-ish kilograms in the mid 80s, I think. I haven't weighed myself in ages, but I'm not a small person and yeah, it, it, it holds my weight really well. They actually have a max rated weight for this chair of, I think it's 134 kilograms. All in all, it's not as comfortable as you'd expect for the eye-watering asking price, but it does feel like it's gonna take really good care of your body. So with that, let's take these chairs to my house and spend an irresponsible amount of time sitting in them. Okay, ooh, uh, that is very springy. I shouldn't have dropped down in the chair this much, but um, yeah, there we go. We're gonna start the timer now at like 10.36. So at 10.36 at night, I can get up and hopefully I've not been crippled. Thank you, Jen. Um, I can't reach the camera. <laughs> I can't, Anna. <laughs> we are about 17 minutes in and I'm still comfy on the on the luxurious fancy chair which is to be expected I guess um, so now I'm gonna do some streaming and then I'll report back to you after about two to three hours okay so I've just finished streaming uh, which means we are now about three hours and 20 minutes in I don't know if it's gonna focus on that and even on the very fancy chair I can say <laughs> I'm already starting to feel it, especially in my thighs in terms of padding. My back still feels really good, um, but th that lack of padding is definitely, is definitely not going super well. At this point, we're about five hours and 20 minutes into the session and the, the, the main reason I think I was getting butt tiredness or butt fatigue from the chair was because I wasn't really shifting my weight around enough. And now that I've kind of, now that I'm doing that more, it, it does feel better. So yeah, I'm, I'm still feeling good. I don't have any back pain yet at all, like no back pain. Uh, the main thing is just my thighs feel a bit worn. But again, with, with enough shifting around, it's good. So we are now officially seven hours in. We've just gone over seven hours and I am now, just now, starting to feel my lower back. Um, so <laughs> there's still quite a long period to go. We've still got about five hours left and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. I'm feeling surprisingly good still. Like it's been uh, it, it's not gotten any more lower back taxing than it's been at about seven hours. I still feel like I'm relatively comfortable in the chair as well. So I, I think that's quite impressive because there's like little increments in which you can change the extent to which, you know, the back goes down. It means you can have variety in terms of positions that you get kind of comfortable in and stuff. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it should be considering what it costs, but we're 10 hours in and it's going well. And just like that, we hit the end of the first 12 hour challenge with the fancy chair. Here I'm just tiredly rambling about how reclining while watching TV made my butt feel better. But once I got up, I was filled with insightful feedback. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Um, it, it, has, it has performed valiantly. It is now soiled in David juice, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, lots of, <laughs> lots of butt juice. It is now the next morning and uh, we finished assembling this chair. It, it is actually significantly more janky than I was expecting. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, I guess I just have to sit down on it and then... Okay, 
Okay, um, we've just gone over three hours and despite the fact that this chair is is really uncomfortable, it really pushes you over. I, can, I don't know if you can see on camera how much it wants to lean forward. And then when you have it a bit back, then you, you it like falls back when you try and sit upright. So it's like it kind of actively prevents you from sitting properly, um, but I'm still relatively like, I'm, I'm not feeling anything in my body or whatever. So despite the fact that it's really uncomfortable, it's not hurting me yet, which is good. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed with, with the fact that it hasn't hurt me yet. We are about six hours and 40 minutes into the, the, the torture chair. And um, I still feel fine, you know, so that's good. It's, it's better than I was expecting. I was, I was expecting to me not to be able to ever walk again after like three hours, considering just how uncomfortable this chair is. But apparently I am a young beast of a man and just sitting on this abomination of a chair isn't, doesn't seem to affect my body that much. I just had a horrendous Dota match where I was essentially trapped in a team full of rabid animals attacking each other for no reason. And now that it's over, we are, we've just crossed the 10 hour mark. And what I've realized is that I'm not the one that's been trapped on this chair for 12 hours. This chair is the one that's been trapped under me for 12 hours because it's 10 hours in and I'm still feeling perfectly fine, uh, but the chair feels like it is on its last legs. I, I keep waiting for it to just kind of like snap off its base and then just like knock me out on the desk as I fall down. Um, it's, it's not going well with it at all. I would, I'm surprised it hasn't broken yet. Uh, but we've got two hours left for me to, to break it with my man body. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's see, let, let's see what happens. It has been 12 hours and apparently I am made out of a combination of rubber, steel and magic because I, I feel fine. The chair genuinely has been degrading over the course of the 12 hours. I don't think it's doing very well. Um, but it survived, it didn't break, I have survived, and now I get to get up from this terrible chair and hopefully I don't ever have to sit in it again. I barely feel any different than I did yesterday when I got out of the, <laughs> the Herman Miller chair. My uh, tailbone is a bit more sore than it was, but other than that, I'm fine. Um, that chair sucks though. It, it really, really sucks. It is super uncomfortable. That mixed with the fact that I think it's gonna last maybe two or three more sitting sessions and then it's just gonna break. I feel like that makes it really terrible value for money because you're gonna have to buy like eight of these at a time so you can just kind of like cycle through them as they break. Um, it feels like a wish chair, to be honest. Um, but yeah, with that, back to the studio for the conclusion. I am not entirely sure what I was expecting there. Apparently, as a relatively limber guy in his 20s, sitting for 12 hours in a bad chair didn't seem to faze me very much. But as somebody that's lived with bad chairs before, give it a couple months and then it's really gonna start taking a toll on you. Now, my main takeaways from this experiment has been, well, the first one is that these very budget chairs are really bad value for money. I'd be surprised if one of these lasts six months and over 12 years of chair buying, you're probably gonna spend a whole lot more than the cost of that embody chair on these guys uh, if that's the route that you're gonna go. Now, I'm not saying we should all go out and buy extremely expensive chairs. Even if you save up, that isn't an option for a lot of people. However, there are cheaper options. I'll have an awesome chair tier list linked in the description below by David Zhang, where he walks through just the pros and cons of a whole bunch of chairs at various price points and that'll help you make an informed decision so that you don't end up buying one of these terrible things. Uh, and the other takeaway that I have from this video is that even if you have a good chair, you need to make sure that you sit in it properly. While reviewing the footage of me sitting in the Embody for the 12 hour period, for a lot of it, I was still kind of leaning forward and hunching over in the chair, which is not a good thing. You should 
kind of lean back in it and let the chair do its work supporting you. So at the end of the day, uh, don't buy one of these cheap chairs because it's one of the reasons why in 10 years we're going to be swallowed by a tsunami of broken consumer electronics and discarded SK Depot chairs. So <laughs> yeah, buy, buy a better thing once as opposed to a bad thing a bunch of times and, and filling landfills with it. Um, but yeah, that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and until the next video bye bye